What up? Welcome to the Katie Black Show YouTube channel. Today I have with me... My name is DJ Pat, Pat Ryan. DJ Pat Ryan, straight out of Philly, right? Straight out of Philly. I'm originally from New York, but, uh, you know, started doing the clubs down here in Atlantic City and uh, eventually moved into weddings in South Jersey, Philadelphia, and uh, the surrounding areas. So, quick background. I know Pat Ryan because you were the DJ for my best friend's wedding a couple months back in Philadelphia, the Ryan and Ryans. It was an incredible wedding. Such an amazing vibe. And you were part of it. You were part of that. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely one for the books. Honestly, that that wedding was like out of control. Really, that's <laughs> awesome to hear because I always yeah, like what's obviously you have like the vantage point of the crowd, so that's cool to hear. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And you never know because every wedding's different. You know what I mean? So like, there's always whether it's a different venue or a different style. So like, every wedding is amazing, but like that one really stood out to me. Those guys were just amazing to work with. Oh. I've never seen so many spreadsheets in my life. No, they were they were awesome. Very organized. I love it. I love it, honestly. Yeah, because I'm sure you appreciate it as opposed to like, wait, what? Like, what's right? Yeah, well, I, I mean, even like past two weekends, I had couples, it was the day before, and they still didn't get me over. Like, I'm very, you know, I, I have everything on point. I'm like a perfectionist, like, literally putting together crazy times. I wear so many hats, but uh, they didn't even get me like their aisle songs, their first dance songs. And like, I'm doing other weddings. So if I'm running three or four weddings in a day, like, I don't really have time to be planning your wedding that's tomorrow, the right. day before when I'm working somebody else's wedding. It just doesn't happen. But, I, you know, you do what you got to do, right? I know they loved you. And also, too, very um, awesome. When I was giving the speech, I quoted a Savage Garden song. And sure enough, once I concluded, you played that song. And we just <laughs> love that. Yeah, always listening. We yeah, love yeah. that. Because I think a couple people were like, wait, did you, did you give him a heads up? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny i actually don't even remember doing it but uh oh. I'm, I'm glad i caught on to it and uh you know that's definitely the way to go out on a speech yeah that was like the cherry on top so i appreciate <laughs> that we all do that was just awesome that's cool. but i always ask people so i know you said new york but which is, were you born and raised there or i always ask people where they grew up yeah i'm originally from long island um i grew up in like suffolk county colmax smithtown long island probably about like an hour from the city mm -hmm. um uh, graduated from there and then went to um, college at Morgantown, West Virginia University. Um, crazy, crazy party school. I don't know how I graduated, like a 3.8, like somehow I did it. Um, that's another day of a whole book of stories. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, so I was DJing the clubs down there, stayed for a few a few years with a couple of contracted residencies at nightclubs. And then I moved to Jersey and was working in all the casinos. Um, that's how I ended up here. Actually, a girl. I met a girl. What else? You know, the girls do it to you. But uh, so I met a girl. I ended up in Jersey. Started working on all the casinos, Harris. Um, I don't know, all of them, Caesars. Um, oh my goodness! I mean, and then I'll go back. But uh, yeah, from there it was just weddings moving forward. Trying so to get away. I'm getting old, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, no! Aren't you? <laughs> I'm, I'm obsessed with generations. Before I go back to your career, I'm assuming you're a millennial like myself, which is baby yep. born between 1981 and 96. Yep, correct. So you said you're old. Like, do you really think you're old? I'm not old. I'm, I'm, I'm 37. I'm not that old. Um, but in this I get what you're saying. Nobody wants like an 80 year old DJ. Like there's, you know, you kind of tap out at a certain point. Um, mm -hmm. I have to start hiring younger guys, but you know what? I do a lot of stuff myself and uh, I'm starting to fall apart. Like I, I started off break dancing when I was younger. I like, I would go out and perform DJ companies and this and that. But uh, so I ended up having two knee surgeries and I'm like, you know what? I'm tapped out. Damn. And so again, I'm falling apart. So like, that's why I'm 37. I'm like, I'm really starting to feel it. I got to hire these young guys to come carry my equipment for me, uh, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, I can't do this forever. So I got, I got backup plans. <laughs> oh wait, like, were you like literally the guy like spinning on his head? I still have bumps on my head. From, I have like a bump in the middle of my head from doing head spins. It's crazy. Um, I yep. love that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, how did that happen? Was that just like people in your neighborhood kind of doing that? Was that your own thing? Uh, or No, I wish it was that cool. No, it's not that cool. Um, I just had a buddy. We, we, we would sneak into nightclubs um, probably around like 15, 16. And uh, they used to do circles and stuff. So we're like, this is awesome. We, so we started like kind of trying to figure it out on our own. Um, eventually, you know, we had a couple performances. People started hiring us. And then uh, 
then I was like, all right, this is cool. Well, I want to DJ because, you know, it kind of goes hand in hand, like the whole scene. Um, but nobody would let me DJ because I had no experience. So, like, then I'm like, I turn into that guy at, like, the weddings, like, you know, like, come on. So I, was, I was like, I can't do this crap anymore. Um, so eventually I worked for nightclubs. They started doing promotions because they wouldn't hire me as a DJ either. Uh, I brought in enough people that they'd be like, all right, you earned your, your pay. Go drop a set. Started getting to know those guys. Started working in nightclubs from there and uh, never break danced until maybe <laughs> later on. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. Every now and then I'll bust out a move, but I, I'm telling you, one of my legs is going to go bad. Yeah. That's amazing, though. I love that. Yeah. No, it is pretty cool. It's cool. It hurts. <laughs> but, but two two knee surgeries, and that was essentially associated with that lifestyle? Exactly. Uh, between that and, like, snowboarding, I was just a, I was a nut. Uh, but, uh, yeah, breakdancing really messed me up. I was actually in a wheelchair for, like, a year because I, I had two back-to-back -back surgeries because the one didn't I, – I, like, literally what I did is, like, I think it's called a bucket tear. I flipped my meniscus, like tore and flipped it over to the other side. So I had to flip it back and like restitch it down on both knees. And it didn't take, especially when I started breakdancing again, I ripped it right open. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, um, yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> well, if I ever get with like some big company, we'll have to come and do a documentary on you. That's amazing. Oh my God. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, going back to the millennial bracket, and do you play into any of the stereotypes or anything that you've heard about it? Or is it just nothing to you? Or What do you mean? Just millennials in general? Oh, well, yeah. I just feel like I wish I'd ask people that because that's kind of the main chunk of who I interview. But just, I don't know. I mean, I, there was a period there where we were like entitled. Um, I like you know, just any of that. I don't know. I've, I've seen a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, even with today's generation, I, I think everything's just all mixed up. But I mean, I, as far as our generation goes, I mean, I see friends who are doing really well. I see friends who aren't. Then You know what I mean? Then you have, I, it's all over the place. Um, but then like you have today, I don't want to kind of switch up today's generation. Like I see, I think they're, they're not misconstrued. I, we go from an era, I was thinking about this this morning. It's so funny you're asking, but like we go from an era where like our parents are always like, you need to work and save and and this generation, it's not that they don't want to work. They want to work, but they work smart is what I'm realizing. Like they really are smart. They don't need to go out there and bust their asses, you know, sweating, mowing, not that anything against mowing lawns, but like mowing lawns all day. They'll be like, you know what? I'm going to come up with a company. I'm going to subcontract this through Fiverr and I'm going to have somebody mow the lawn. You know what I mean? Like that they think differently. And, uh, but yeah. I'm kind of rambling like the technology and just maybe they were more not that we weren't but more observant of like okay this is like i don't want to do xyz you know yes yes exactly i agree but, well and i always say i love our generation just obviously i'm biased but just because i feel like we were the last generation to like live life before the internet yes yes, yes. again my wife and i were talking about this morning it's so weird um i agree 100 percent. it's just a different it's a new world it really is a new world. I, you know, we were talking about like Christmas. You had Christmas music on for some reason. I don't know why, but all year around, we're always listening to Christmas music. But uh, I love it. It was different for our age. Like our kids will never experience what we experience. You know what I mean? Looking back, um, it's a different, different world. But yeah, it is what it is, right? It's cool. It's cool. I'm enjoying oh. it. I'm, I mean, I'm. A, you got to keep an open mind, right? Totally. Open well, mind. I'm very. You know, basically, I love our time zone, very nostalgic, what have you. And so obviously, it's even cooler that you're so associated with music. But like, who did you love growing up? Or like, who did you have a poster on your wall of? Oh, God, I think I had a Britney Spears poster. No, <laughs> the basketball. No, I, I mean, uh, music wise, I, I only knew what my sister and my cousins uh, or my, my older cousin um, listened to. And that was like, they, used to, they were like 80s babies. I mean, they were listening to like MC Hammer and, you know, like, so for real and stupid stuff like that. And I thought that was stuff was cool. But I remember when I was like nine, my mom showed me like how you could put a tape in the uh, tape player and you actually could record what was on the radio. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Like, so then like, I, it didn't really kick. Mm -hmm. like, but like over time, it just, I started to really like music. Like even, it was so weird. Even certain music just made me sick. And I'm like, I can't listen to it because it was so <laughs> bad. Like whatever is like, I don't, I don't know. It, like my sister being a car listener, I'm like, I, I'm gonna throw up. I gotta get out of this car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, it, you just kinda, her, sorry. But, no, no, go ahead. It's interesting because it sounds like you literally just ha would have like a visceral, visceral reaction. 
Yeah, it, it's. I still get it every now and then. Like, I'll have to like bite my tongue when like I'm in the car with my wife. Sometimes just like let her listen to her music, like whatever. I I I don't want to be the guy to solely choose all the music and everybody's life music for their stories. And you know what I mean. I'm even I'm used to it because I'm used to setting the mood, setting you know the ambiance and the vibes and the energy and trying to control everything in the room and like. Some of the music, I'm just like, oh, I can't do it. Can you turn this off? I'm going to fall asleep. Like, it's just too much. But, like, sometimes I'm weird. Are you a Libra or no? No, no, I'm a Pisces. Okay, okay, okay. I just, yeah. I don't know. I just got that vibe. <laughs> no, that's cool, though. Um, okay. do you, speaking of that, do you play into any of those, you know, your sign, your horoscope? Or are you that guy? Or 100%, honestly. I think I'm a Pisces through and through. Uh, as much as I want to deny it, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, all of it. I'm, that's me. Like I try not to let it take over, but, uh, you know, I definitely see a lot of the weaknesses in myself and, uh, it's, I'm, I'm a Pisces. I mean, obviously uh, I know it sounds like you were, you've had some body issues just from like killing it on the dance floor, but the only th random thing that I know about Pisces is that they tend to have feet problems. Does that apply to you? No, no not at all. Good. Okay. I've always been very particular. I don't know why, like even when I was a kid, for some reason, a random story, I used to like always have socks on. So like we'd be out camping and I'd be like stepping on things that not be in the mud. Like, I don't know. Even I had surgery when I was younger and they, I, they, I cried. They had to put me to sleep before they took my socks off. Like I, I'm always clean. Like I'm just very particular. I don't know. I love that. Okay. So something with the feet regardless, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know what it is about the Pisces sign. Cause somebody actually said that to me. They said like, you're a Pisces, you have an obsession with feet. And I'm like, I, that's kind of gross. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but okay. So going back to DJing, you said that a girl kind of introduced you to that life. Sorry, cir to circling back to that. How did that, is that correct? Not or so much to the life. So I, what, what I was saying is I met a girl in college in West Virginia and uh, she was from Jersey. That's how I kind of was like, all right, Jersey. So I, I know I didn't want to go back home to New York. Um, I realized like after being away for so long, I, that wasn't the type of area, nothing against New Yorkers represent, but um, I just didn't like that area. It just, I don't know. I get it. I'm much more open here. I mean, I didn't see my first cow I was like 22. Right. <laughs> like, and I was like, there's so much more out here. And that's when I was like, you know, I'll stay in Jersey. And so any, I mean, and I'm sure this is maybe an unfair question, but like, what is the craziest thing you've seen DJing these like throughout these years, regardless whether it was like at a wedding or you said, I know you did the casino thing. Like what, is there one standout moment or do they all kind of blur together? There's so many, I mean, there's so many interesting things like a crazy, I mean, it's all crazy. It's weddings. People are crazy. Like people hanging from ceilings and all kinds of acrobats. Um, I'm, I think it's more just the stories behind it. Like, as the DJ and nobody knows what's going on, but we have cancellations all the time. You have no clue. I've had couples where the groom slept with the bride's sister and they had to cancel their wedding. Like there's all that kind of crazy stuff. But as far as like weddings, it's crazy in general. People are always bringing out new things and doing elaborate. How can I make my wedding different? It's cool. I like obviously, it. Obviously, do you, since there is like a risk of cancellations is obviously like they have to do you do contracts and stuff so we do contracts but like it gets to a point where sometimes like you don't want to add more stress to people's lives like they have to go in now they have to send out you know apologies and tell everybody the weddings they're going through so much and me yeah. personally I, just, I don't like yes i build in for my own you know safety because like if i can't work your wedding and i might not be able to fill that date especially if it's in like the next you know four to six months everybody books a year out so now i'm you're taking food off out of my you know my family's plate whatever and i still got to survive i do all right but regardless i kind of just keep that there but at the end of the day i'm just like listen don't worry about it like good year day you're you know, a chill I, guy I, I try i so i got married during covid and i just i got putting into so much crap, like our wedding venue wouldn't even let us have like a small wedding. They want to give us back our deposits so we can just go get married. Like the DJ canceled on me. We had to reschedule like three. I couldn't even tell you my wedding date. I think it's like November 26th, but I don't even know because we kept rescheduling. And I just, I never want to have to put anybody through. That should be an amazing time in their lives. And I never want to put anybody through that. Like do what you got to do. I wish you the best of luck. And you know, that's it. Oh, well, nice. Well, I guess so obviously, essentially it sounds like what you guys went through gave you perspective of like what you wouldn't want someone to do to you 
One hundred percent. I never really was able to put myself in the position of a bride and groom until I got married. Obviously, um, you know, I was always looking at it from the DJ side and and things like you know when I was trying to meet with my DJ and I'm sending out emails and I don't hear back for them and I'm doing more weddings than they are. I'm just like I need to co- keep an open line of communication. Like reach out to me. I don't care if it's two in the morning. Like shoot me a text. You guys got life going on and you're trying to plan a wedding. I understand. Shoot me a text. If I don't get back to you, then I'll get back to you in the morning. Like I, I try and make everything so much easier, but you're 100% right. I really did rework how I do things to make everything easier for the couple. Nobody does this more than once, sometimes twice. You know what I mean? You're not supposed to know what to do. It's my job as a professional to ask bride and grooms questions so they don't know, have to know which questions to ask me. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. It should be fun, you know? Ability. Yeah. But when I'm talking to people in the last few years, like, I'll see things, right? So, like, as I'm talking to you, and sometimes they, like... Energies. Sometimes they check out. Yes. And sometimes they don't. It's not bad at all. I don't want to pr- paint that. But, like, I see someone, like, throwing dough, like, pizzeria. So, like, are you a, is your family associated with that life or absolutely not? No. Anyone or someone that like I don't know I don't again like I said if it doesn't check out it doesn't check out. No, I mean that could be anything. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> not, not that I know of. I love pizza. Trust me, but uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean I do have a big Italian side, so who knows? Pizza is like life. Right. But, it's like okay. Nice, but life. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry. I had I had to ask because I no, just, keep throwing them at me. I like this. <laughs> I just keep seeing. Like I said, I just see like it's yeah. Like I don't. I don't know how else to sound it without selling obviously off the wall, which I'm sure I already no, know. No, no, no. I don't judge. Trust me. I just, I just see someone like making the dough, throwing the dough in the air. Um, you said that you were kind of over the New York thing. How do like, obviously you love the Philadelphia area and don't have a desire to go back there. Or... New York. Hell no. I hate, I love my family, but guys, if you're watching, it is, it's a pain in the ass to go visit you. Especially since I have a kid, uh, he's eight months now and it's like, mm-hmm wife's breastfeeding you gotta like feed him every three hours like it's just a process I, I mean a two and a half three hour drive now takes what like anywhere between four and six like that is a nightmare but what I realized and again nothing against New York people when I stepped out and went to West Virginia and kind of you know was there for a few years for college um and then I went back to New York I just realized like the people are different um it's a lot about like, well, at least maybe from just from where I'm from, but it was a lot of, more about like, look what I have and like a lot of like chit chat about everything, everybody. And I just, I don't know, I needed to get away from that. It was just give me anxiety. Now it's, now it's the traffic there. Like even going with the wife in the car, we'd be like, stop tailgating that guy. And then you go too far back and then someone cuts you off and it's just like, it's anxiety. <laughs> so I can't do it anymore. That, but, that's just kind of what I came across from being out of the state for so long and then going back. I just, it wasn't my vibe. No, I understand. So it was, I mean, I'm assuming obviously long story short was West Virginia, like a culture shock to you or were you kind of prepared that it was going to be different? I was a little prepared. Honestly, I was going at a party anyways, <laughs> but um, no, it wasn't really so much a culture shock except on my legs. Cause those hills are out of control. Not mm-hmm. years, not, but um, it was more just a slower pace of life. Uh, I don't know. And again, getting away from people for a while, you start to like see who they are. I don't know. I guess no, I that in your life too, like, you know, when you get out of high school, whatever, you have drinking buddies, whatever, and people change and people go in different directions, but you come back and you're like, why did I hang out with this kid? I don't even like this guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So it just gave you like a clear, that's how we say people like get out of town and like get a perspective of everything, I guess. 100 percent i i listen i paid a lot of money for college and i honestly probably didn't learn much at all but i grew as a person and that's what made everything that's what matters yeah 100 I'm, I'm a completely different person since i went away to school so if your kids going away to school i recommend it i'm sorry about the bill but <laughs> it's worth it <laughs> it is i love that that's a good perspective as well you seem to be very like i mean not to be corny but just, you seem to have a great i don't know mindset Thank you. That, well, I mean, you got to go through some crap to kind of, you know, realize, otherwise you don't know, you know, that's why even with brought and grooms, like I'll, I'll have meetings with couples and they don't know because they've never worked with a DJ. So they don't, they don't know if they're getting like the best of the best or the worst of the worst. They don't know if they should be planning a meeting call two days before their wedding or six months out. So they don't really, I have to kind of explain that stuff to them. Otherwise they don't realize how good and how much above and beyond I go to make 
their wedding day absolutely incredible that maybe another DJ might not. You're, you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe like slightly like a counselor or something, huh? With these. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> I'm with a counselor. No, I, I mean, you really, there's so many moving parts to this stuff. They're, they're really, it's not just playing music anymore. I mean, I'm literally creating a timeline and trying to figure out what exactly they're looking for, incorporating in their day. You know, is dinner running behind because the venue, sometimes they just try and throw everything out. They got to slow it down. Is dinner running behind? Let's get these people up and dancing. Where's the photographer? We're doing this. So I'm like, I'm literally everywhere trying to coordinate hosting the event in a way. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and it gives, obviously, since I'm not in that world, it you're highlighting things of like, oh, yeah, it is kind of like a moving machine, essentially. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And you know, it, you just can't have any dead spots. You can't. Mm -hmm. There's not time. Your wedding day goes so quick. I didn't get out of the hallway for like a half hour because I kept getting hit left and right with people. And at that time just like fly. So we don't have time for nonsense you know what i mean like something needs to be going on if they're not eating dinner maybe background music gets people slow dancing like something i don't know well, it's been a while but i remember i had interviewed a dj like years ago here locally and she said that it pisses her off when someone comes and requests a song does that ring true to you or no, not at all. I mean, that's our job. We play to the crowd. Like, I don't, I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, you want to play what people want to hear. I mean, but as a DJ, especially on someone's wedding day, you have to, you have to use your own judgment. Um, and I've learned that lesson. I've had somebody request a weird song when I was younger at a black party and it ended up having a crap of little curses in it. And I kind of got my ass chewed out. Um, excuse the language, but, uh, no, oh my God, no, please. All right, cool. I just, just speak freely. Awesome. Sometimes they slip out, but, um, yeah, you have to use your own judgment. Um, a lot of the time, honestly, with weddings, it's usually stuff you're going to play anyways. Um, unless the bride have a very, or bride and groom have a very, or bride and bride, whatever it is, the couple has a very specific do not playlist or no request at all. But either way, like if somebody comes up, they'll be like, oh, can you play, you know, want to dance with somebody? I'm like, sure, why not? Like, it's mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, another random question that I have. Not that I haven't been random so far, but... I, I'm loving this. You're awesome. This is cool. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, Big um, thing going on and has been for a while is, like, cancel culture. So I know that that, like, blurs the lines with music. And this is my only real example because someone told me was that they were out and about and, like, someone, obviously, the establishment was playing Michael Jackson and some, you know, Karen or whatever went up and requested, like, no michael jackson i was wondering do you see that kind of stuff on your end of the some couples i do um yeah i mean i want to say maybe like 15 percent out of 100 uh no, it's usually the no r kelly no michael jackson um but then they'll have if they're that picky then they're going into like okay we don't want anything cliche we don't want any bruno mars like they take out pretty much anything everybody knows that's oh, popular fine. Which is okay because I can work. I can always work around it. Um, but you have to remember, like as a person in a wedding attending, like you want to know the music. You want people to dance and have a good time. It's not just about like I don't know stuff you like or don't like. Like you're playing a like, grandma might know Uptown Funk. Like whatever, who cares? Like is it really going to make that big of a difference? But I don't mind. I wonder what Ryan and Ryan's uh, do not play as were. Yeah, me too. Ryan and Ryan. All right. Oh God! <laughs> Is it a long way? Sorry, guys. Oh my God! All right, here we go. You ready for this? Yes. All right. No line dances. That's an obvious one. Conga lines. Shout. Blur lines. Who let the dogs out? Jesse's girl. Turn down for what? White wedding. I don't think anybody actually plays that song ever. But uh, <laughs> Vanilla Ice. All songs. Gangnam Style. We Are Family. Kanye West. All songs. Get Low. Aerosmith. Watch me whip, watch me nay nay, save a horse, ride a cowboy, black eyed peas. I can keep going. Love shack, happy celebration. Listen, you know what you want and you kind of just rock with it. And I get to, I get that there's preference, you know, but what's your thoughts, especially like being in the music industry of like, this person's a criminal. I don't want them. This person's a criminal. I don't want to play it. Like what's, cause I've always tried to tell people that you get to a point, me specifically, where it's like you've got to separate the art from the artist. Or like, is that your vibe or I don't I don't yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. Music's music to me, it's whatever. Like stop putting too much thought into it. I understand. Like, okay, if they were like I, I try not to think about it. Like even R. Kelly, like 
what a dick like the guy you know what i mean in my personal opinion but uh like whatever so people like the songs like we used to play uh What's that song at the end of the night? My body's telling me yet, or whatever. Yes, yes. Oh, my body, whatever. And people sing it like, and then you always get the one drunk girl yelling at you like, "Oh my god, I can't believe you're playing this!" Like, I don't care. I don't. I really don't care. Like, if people like it, I play to the crowd. I play what they want to hear. I work <laughs> off their vibes, and I don't really have any opinion on any of that stuff. Hardcore about it. I did one private event where this guy was like, it was like a Penn State thing. It was Penn, he was somewhere in Penn State or I don't know somewhere not. I don't know, mm -hmm. um, but it was like no Michael Jackson. I will not hear Michael Jackson. He did this and he did that. And he went to like I was like, okay, sir, no problem. <laughs> uh, stay away from not a big deal. And I guess yeah. I get what you're saying too that it's you know whatever people want they want whatever they don't it's it is what it is right. It's somebody who doesn't like us like I'll see like I'll be DJing like this one person like I can hear like I I don't care how loud the speakers are like I don't know if I just started reading lips there's so much more that I'm looking at in the crowd but like I'll hear somebody on the other side of the floor saying I hate this song while this huge group over here is like, like belting on the top of their lungs like there's always going to be a song or something that somebody doesn't like it is what it is like I'm here for the general audience and the general public and make sure everybody's having a good time not just you if you want to get mad because I played something like whatever and I mean, not that I didn't know this, but I guess it's more conscious that I guess just even talking to you and all these examples, it's like, obviously music is like very personal to people, huh? It is. It is. I, you know, it's so weird. I don't even listen to a lot of the words in the songs that I play. So I like, except for the curses, like if I go on a radio or something like that, but like, I don't even listen to the half the songs. It's more just like, I read the energies from the songs and the reactions. And that's how I kind of go off them. Like body language. I never really thought about it. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. I'm like mentally drained after these events because I'm not just thinking one song ahead. I'm thinking six or seven songs ahead. Like, where do I want to bring these guys? You know, who's on the floor right now? How much is in their their drink glass? Like, I mean, say I'm DJing a bar. The point of being at the bar is to rotate, get everybody drinking. So I get a ro their glasses are low. Let's get these people off the floor. Let's get those people at the bar back here. How old are they? Do we have any famous people in here that we need to shout out? Like, I'm I'm looking and trying to literally control everything. It's nuts. It's almost like you're kind of like a music magician or something. <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> Maybe I'll change my DJ name. Yeah. Uh, question, but before we get cut off, I want to get if you want to give a shout out to your social media or websites or anything. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, feel free to stop on my my uh, Instagram. It's at DJ Pat Ryan. Um, uh, my company's PRS Event Productions. Uh, that's prseventproductions.com. Um, we do everything like lighting, DJs. I mean, listen, you want people hanging from the ceiling or shooting fireworks out of their mouths? Like, we could figure it out. We literally do everything, photo booths. Um, you guys, so I yeah. was literally at the wedding, and he, like, he's amazing. Thank you. That means a lot. Oh, it does. Seriously. I'm, I'm so humble. I love hearing that stuff. So just thank you. And thank you for the opportunity of having me. Um, you're incredible. It was really <laughs> nice getting to know you and talk with you. Ditto off okay. the cuff randomness at the end was wondering cool. if you've ever seen a ghost or something unexplained or UFO or anything you want to share. Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely seen ghosts. Uh, I don't, I didn't realize like it was when I was younger. Uh, it started just weird things. Like I had a, like a feeling and then I started seeing things and I just thought it was odd. And then I realized like I have to talk to my mom one day. She's like, I've been seeing things too. And my mother has seen things and I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's maybe something passed down. Uh, this is weird. I, I try not to talk about this stuff because I don't want people to like have like this like weird impression on me, but like I've definitely seen things. Um, one notable, notable moment, uh, I was in my room. I was actually at my nan's house and uh, Hicksville, New York. And um I was sleeping, I was laying in a bed doing homework and I was waiting for my mom to come up. Mm -hmm. So I had a question and I, in the corner of the room, there's a mirror that faces out to the hallway. So you can literally see, you know, like into the hallway from the mirror or whatever. So um, I see a woman walk by in her nightdress and I was like, mom, and she didn't answer. I was like, mom. So I got up, I ran to the hallway and ran to her room and I realized I was standing there alone in the dark and I was like, like my my heart just dropped like felt like it fell out of my ass like i was just like what the hell was that so the next day i reached out to my nan i was talking to my nan i'm like so i saw something last night it wasn't my mom she's like what was it i said it was a lady in a nightdress so basically she was like so before we moved in there was a lady that lived in this house and her husband divorced her 
and she didn't have a place to go. She had no money. So we ended up buying the house and we let her live here with us. Eventually, um, she did move out, but she passed away and I've seen her too. And she's been walking around the hallways. Um, so very creepy. So that, that's just a very odd story, but like, it's nuts. Then I've had the bad ones too. And something like, I'm so freaked out by what I just saw that I literally paralyzed, paralyzed, like clear as day. And I can't make it out, but like, I wouldn't, I can't move. It's not, I get like, I'm getting chills thinking about it. Nuts. So yes, I've definitely seen that. UFOs, I've seen UFOs too, definitely. Bro, you're like the jackpot. What was your, is it just kind of like how many UFOs do you think you've seen? I, I want to say two for sure. Um, I, I mean, my mom said we were buying an Air Force base, but this thing stopped above a supermarket and just hovered there. It was weird. It was so weird. And then it just left. And I was like, I Ma, you saw that. She's like, well, there's an Air Force base. Maybe that's, I was like, all right, no, I know what I saw. And then actually it was about like two weeks ago. I'm talking to my DJ friend after a gig. I'm like, I look up and it was like an orange glow. And I was like, he's like, look at me. He's like, I was like, bro, did you just, you didn't see that? Like it just blasted off and just flew like, like that. And I was like, that was not a star, bro. I don't know what that thing was, but out of control. Anyways, those are my long stories. Yeah. I love it. Appreciate yeah. you sharing. But I will say something, what you said about like being handed down. Like I do think, cause there's something on my mom's side, uh, like, like my grandma had to think my mom and like me and my sister a little bit. So I do think that there's something to like, I don't know if it's like, just like a gene or like some kind of where like, yeah, but basically I'm confirming that I do, that I believe that it is handed down. Cool. That's awesome. I, I agree. I think it is too. Like I said, you know, I'm trying to figure out, like I said, I, mine isn't really like ghosts. I've seen one, but mine is more like vibes and like literally seeing like images in my head and trying to connect them. That's cool. So, Keep working on it. I, I really think people just have to work on it and eventually they can kind of hone in on that. Uh, they'll mm -hmm. like that, but uh, I don't know. I'm trying energies. So I just, I can't read energies. <laughs> you would think as a DJ, like that kind of energy I could read, but I can't, I don't know. I think kids can. Honestly, I think they all start yeah. with it and then it kind of fades. That's okay. my understanding just because of all my weird research. It's essentially like um, kids are more inclined to because they like have really no ego. Exactly. Yeah. They're not corrupted yet. It's not. So real one, one last question. Do you feel like, you know, as you've aged, like, do you feel like you, you don't see as many things or like that's really not the case with you? I guess you could relate it to that, honestly. Um, I don't know. I, I guess it also depends on kind of where you're at in, in life. And, you know, I'm just, I'm so happy in my life that like, I don't know, maybe I just overlook those things now or I know how to kind of avoid them. I haven't had, I haven't seen anything in a really long time. Maybe it's just the house that I'm living in. Um, but that could be it too. Yeah. I was wondering that too, but it's weird because I don't dream that much either. Seemed like that went away. I don't know. Oh, okay. DJ Pat Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. I did. That was fun. Uh, I hope you guys will have me back one day. Yes. And also to plug, if your mom, obviously I know it's odd, but like if your mom would ever want to come and share her experiences, open, you know, open door policy. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll let her know. <laughs> like I said, I should be like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, she'd be like, what? What's going on? Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I will be in touch when this airs. And like I said, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, it was really nice to get to know you and talk with you. Um, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. What up?